we're gonna have a look at example six and see how we're gonna use this Lamy's equation. Right, so example six, we have a pressure vessel, thick wall pressure vessel, and um, let's get this here. And you have internal diameter. You have Ri, and then you have outer diameter Ro. You have a pressure on the inside. Right, so we have internal pressure and I want us to calculate uh, the so determine an expression for um, sigma hoop and sigma radial alright so we start off we know Lamy's equation is given here sigma r and sigma hoop a plus b on r squared and we said we needed boundary conditions so these boundary conditions it comes from the application of the, the pressure so we could set r equal to r not the radial stress is zero because that's a free surface right um there's no stress being applied on the outside here no stress or no pressure on that surface. So, right, so that is one one recognition. The other one at R equal to R I, the radial stress is a pressure. Right, so these are your two boundary conditions from which we could find A and B. Right, so boundary condition one A minus B on R O squared is equal to zero. Right, and boundary condition two. Right, so from these two equations you could get A e and B. So we could say um, A equal to B on R squared. So that is B, and therefore A would be right. So this is A and B. So now we could substitute now in the hoop and radial stress equations. Let's say radial stress would be. So we could pull out a common factor, we could pull out um, PRI squared. Right, so this is a sigma R, and likewise, we could do the same and solve for sigma H. Right, so these are expressions for a hoop stress and a radial stress.
Right, so you notice it is in terms of R. So that means as R is changing, this value of stress will change. Right, so as a numerical example, if you were to put some values to it, if you say the pressure is 70 megapascals, RO is 200 millimeters, and RI is 100 millimeters. First thing we need to do is to check and see If it's, necessary, if it's necessary to do thick wall calculation, because if not, then we could use a simple thin wall. Alright, so for that, we can the mean, and remember the mean diameter was... Alright, so that would be 400. Right, the thickness is all right, so the mean on T is three hundred over a hundred, which is actually less than twenty. So therefore Take wall calculation needed for this problem. Right, and then we could go on now, given R not R and R I, we could actually go and take out the sigma whoop and sigma R as a function of the radius. Right, so if it is you were to plot that expression and it's, it's down here, this is how it will look. We have um, the hoop stress and the radial stress. Now remember we said that when, um, when the radial stress was, when, when R was equal to R naught, Right, so you know we had a, a boundary condition when r equal to r naught, sigma r is equal to zero. Right, so if you look at that here, if you look at the radius, when the radius is 200, which is r naught, the value of the stress is zero. Right, and when r is equal to 100, the value of the stress will in this case be minus 70. Or 70 pas um, pascals, megapascals. Right, that was the pressure that was applied. Right, so it's minus 70, so we need to kind of go back up here and change this to minus. So I think that, that was a slight error there because it's, it's compression. Right, so it's minus on passing the surface. Right? So this plot here, let's go back to the plot. This plots for the radius, for the hoop and radius just changes. Now this the being able to plot this this was done in matlab and the code for that is given on canvas right if you were to plot it against the pressure vessel it serves as a cross section to get an idea what we're talking about you can see here that this is the radial stress starts off at minus 70 goes to zero and the hoop stress so the your, the largest hoop stress would be on the inside surface here so that's why your, your pressure vessel now would actually, if it has to fail, it will actually start a crack from the inside and then that crack would propagate out. Right? Because that's where your maximum hoop stress is occurring. 
right? And also, why you wouldn't see um, failure of a pressure vessel happening because the crack is starting on the inside.